near rated uh, rare submissions highlight number 10. Hope you guys enjoy it. There's a little bit of action in Japan with some smaller guys here with a uh, Pancreas fighter, pro MMA fighter, and a BJJ blue belt. But guys, there's quite a bit of footage against much bigger uh, pro fighters at Korean top team when I went to Seoul. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope everyone likes all these 10 narrated rare submission uh, grappling highlights I did as I traveled around the world. Um, I actually locked his elbow straight there. You can see that in my real Steven Seagal Aikido-ish uh, versus MMA BJJ fighters video. If you're into that kind of thing, I definitely want you to check that out. Uh, a sprawl here, but I place my uh, hand on the chin strap and I'm just using body weight there and I switch this into a 10 finger guillotine. Um, so guys, I, anyway, I hope everyone enjoys. I've always shared my knowledge that has destroyed my body over, I don't know, 33, 34 years of doing martial arts. Um, training with all the best fighters. I mean, I really have people, uh, haters on the internet don't realize that how many pro fighters, so many different teams that I've visited and, and gone to and moved to and moved around the world. That's just to train with the best guys. I've sparred, you know, I, I estimated at about 700 uh, top pro fighters all in like real good organizations. UFC, Strike Force, Bellator, One, um, Pancreas, Deep, etc. cetera. Um, so anyway, guys, I hope everyone uh, shows me some love and thumbs up. And, and, you know, it'd be great to get some more subscribers. I actually trip on my pants there a bit. And let's see what I do here in the front headlock position. Oh, I'm, sh I'm sugar footing him here, guys. It's a catch wrestling term. See, I post that foot up there. You can see that in my verse 30 top MMA fighters at the end of a video against a uh, judo black belt that turned out to be my friend Aminari's uh, BJJ black belt as well. I sugar footed him and got him in a straight arm bar with the legs. Here, I, sp I um, cross wrist on the other side, spin all the way around the back, spin drill style. Wrestling's important, guys, and get that hammer lock. Here, I'm telling him how to breathe and rejuvenate because psychologically he's broken and I get him to breathe and then boom, he's psychologically back into it. See, I do that with a lot of students, something they don't realize. They're like, oh, I'm so tired, I've had enough. I get him to breathe or I clap my hands together. Um, you're, you're psychologically um, breaking their mindset on the fatigue and, and weakness. And here's a quote of Geishi. And I could have went right into a juji and I'm showing him that. But I actually do like a street juji here. I put my knee on his elbow. And I'm saying, hey, get out. You can get out of that. And it turns, of course, right into a um, cement mixer or a uh, uh, into the Cobra Neck Crank or Half Hatch. <clears throat> Hope you guys can hear my voice better. I just put out the ninth video and realized that uh, the volume on my speech wasn't quite high enough. Hopefully this isn't too high. So I actually eliminated all the volume of the grappling because a lot of it was music anyway. So now I'm at Korean Top Team, and you see everyone I'm rolling with is bigger than me for all you haters out there. But you don't see that many submissions because I'm more in the MMA mindset since I'm at a pro MMA gym. So what that means is, though, here I'm getting the reverse toehold. He actually comes up all the way in the base, and I totally improvise a brand new submission I have a video on, guys. And that would be white belt legal as an ankle lock, I believe. It should be, because all it is is ankle lock with a with the arms with the, on the Achilles. And I'm flexing the foot. It's, it's the, all the mechanics are the exact same as a regular Achilles lock. Uh, so here, doing some scrappling, MMA grappling with some, you know, light strikes. Do a lot of open palm strikes to the ears or karate chops to the necks. Why? Because, you know, I'm cool like that. Hitting the, in the ribs while threatening a guillotine. I do that a lot even if I don't have a full guillotine. Ba -ba -ba -bam. Inside control means I can hit you a bunch. As you saw in my fight versus Yuki Kondo, surprised him very much so with punches from bottom. This was box wrestling. And I just included this because, boom, I got the underhook and bam, right into a lateral drop into mount on a very good fighter there. 
Uh, looks like some electric chair, sweepy action, D path. I don't know. Oh, Homer Simpson up to dogfight. Back to my feet because it's MMA style again, so I would get off bottom. If I'm on bottom, I already effed up, right? And MMA guys, things are different. <laughs> don't be a butt butt scooter. Don't be a butt flopper, man. Um, reality of, of street fights and MMA are very different. So I would get off the bottom if I had and get back to my feet. So I, let me bang, bro. Um, so I get off. I think I got off bottom, got on top, mounted this guy, and then it's like, okay, go back to bottom. I think we're doing one minute positional drills. Looks like half guard here, and the minute ended would be my guess. Yeah, I think that's what we're doing. Was one minute positional drills. Great thing to do. Got to hustle on MMA. It's a different pace than oh, let's just flow roll jujitsu, man. Actually, guys, I just did jujitsu. We'll see if my back totally locks up on me like it, it's done two out of the three last times. I hope I can continue to train. Um, but I actually performed really well today for the most part. Um, I got a lot of real cool submissions. I don't. My camera broke, so I don't have anything. And honestly, in the last two years, I've only videotaped a little bit because I haven't had, you know, haven't only pulled off some cool transitions and not pulling off stuff like I used to. Um, there would have been a chest butt from mount. You know, obviously, I could really do that with a lot of power. And you see, guys, just over and over again, I'm, I'm, I'm taking my own and getting to positions where I could let it land some devastating ground and pound. Little Hickson modified mount there, heel on the gut, frame the neck. Here, the little sit up guard here, but pull full guard. Looks like I wanted to flower sweep there, but. Wasn't available, so he's standing over me where he would be landing good crown and pound. So I go into the knee bar. Pretty low on the knee line. You see his foot is not up by my head, guys, where you really want it on a knee bar. So you can also add a heel hook action to it. But I get on top, right? So that's something I've never seen in all my years of MMA. I even taught that back in my first combat jiu-jitsu videos that were, like, got... 17, 18 million views on, on YouTube for Ehow and Expert Village. Um, I showed that way back then. And, and boy, people still get pounded, like especially against the cage there. You could just posture all the way up and, and rain down blows. Um, going to the knee bar, or the, like I did there, where the uh, star sweep is um, the right thing to do here. So I'm passing down half. See, so yeah, I triangle my legs, trick the legs. It's something I do a lot. I'd always give them that press. pressure. Boom. Smack that knee, palm strike that knee, going them out. Or three-quarter mount, as Daniel Cormier says a lot in his um, commentary, which I like quite a bit, something I termed a long time ago in my ratings, actually, going back in 98, when I used to send SEG, the owners of UFC, a newsletter, and MMA, it's a quarter mount. You want to call it quarter guard in jiu-jitsu? Fine. In MMA, that means I can land a full power punch and elbow to your face. Again, stuff in the knee, passing in a half. I like top half guard. Top half guard's great for MMA. And passing all the way to side mount here. Got a pretty good frame on my hip and neck there. And I don't know if this was the end of sparring. I mean, I think we already sparred or this was the second day. I don't remember. I know the first day is when I... I guess I sparred both days because one day it was big gloves. Yeah, so I think all the grappling guys, I've already sparred in an hour plus um, big gloves or little gloves because uh, I, I did two days back to back. I performed much better the first day than I did the second, but that's because of my disease that I'm dying of. Um, so, you know, I still perform pretty good, as you see. <laughs> um Back to mount. 
Oh, I think there's a cool submission coming up, a rare submission. Well, you can't really see, but I'll explain it. I think this is where it is. But you see, guys, how often I'm getting the mount on these guys. I pass, I go on half guard a little while, and then I either pass directly in the mount. Okay, so I hop off going for the arm triangle choke, the head and arm choke. He defends by answering the telephone, as you hear Joe Rogan talk about during the UFC broadcast as well. When someone answers the telephone, you respond, as I've been putting videos out since 2010 or 11, by uh, going to uh, the telephone lock. I originally learned it back in, I would say, 98 or 99 at one of the JKD schools I looked to. Borrowed Nakamura's uh, Shudo book, old Shudo book, very rare book. And I saw the telephone lock in there. And that's what I got him with, was the telephone lock. It. Guys, if you search my channel, God, I give so much information away for free. It should be great if I got a little bit more appreciation here as I get older. Some leg hook guard action. This guy, um, oh, it's still the blue belt, I think. Yeah, so this is still the blue belt, but he's a pro fighter. So now, chill dog, plot. Uh, he rolls from the Maplata. I set up. I come up and uh, try to watch my right wrist. Try to watch my legs. My legs try and go behind his, deep on his arm, behind his elbow, obviously. And now you just extend that, push that down, and that's how you get a baby arm bar. So I usually am very good at finishing the Umaplata as a submission, uh, much higher than most people because of how I do it. I have a video on that. Do an Umaplata on your side, not this loose triangle, crappy way that. Jiu-Jitsu teaches you, unless you're doing a rolling plot, it's different. Um, look at this toe control I have there. I like to play around with that. That's something I I, I think I've always done, but um, also Gokar Shevichian does a lot of. If you were not aware, guys, I uh, am a black belt in a Gokar Shevichian Jean LeBeau, and I'm also a black belt in BJJ. But I'm just known as the uh, catch Shitsu master. I've always rubbed catch wrestling because of my background, um, you know. And now I told him I'm going to grab you at a Gion, so I'm going to grab it. I wasn't really before. And here is a cross-collar choke or pop-over choke. Yeah, I know that stuff too. And I, I always thought of it as a pop-over choke because the way you set up your hands and then boom, pop your, you know, put your thumb in the back of the neck and then pop it over that. Now this guy is a, a brown belt. I think he teaches some of the classes there. This is a Maha Sakurai's gym. He's trying to Ezekiel me. I'm kind of doing a Nogi Ezekiel, even though his arm's in. I think what's going on there. Okay, some guys do Ezekiel's on me. I just give them pressure back to their own neck. Here I get a top wrist lock in guard and tap them on the top wrist lock. We saw Overeem hit that in Pride, actually. Or Dream. Pride? Dream? I don't know. One of those. They're all run by the same families in Tokyo. Oh, I didn't just say that. Um, so now, uh, people are like, oh, you're just big. No, that's timing. Look what I do there, guys. I, in another video, you see me do that against a much bigger uh, blue belt. Here's a lighter brown belt. Um, that's timing. It is risky. But I'm showing good timing and sensitivity here. If you notice, guys, I'm not using a lot of power, not a lot of muscular contraction. Even when I go go against bigger guys like I did uh, tonight, I, I really don't. I really don't even force submissions or double wrist locks. I know I could in a fight, and in fights I got three first round submissions. I mean, way back in the day, um, way way back in the day. Going for a toe pull, he gets out of the toe pull that I made up. So we go for another submission that I didn't really fully made up. I got it from. But I made it up in this position in half guard. Um, so I hit him with what I dubbed the geisha. I think he was just calling it the foot fold. I wonder if it, in his DVDs now if he called it the geisha or not. I think I'm the one who named it the geisha. Um, uh, Warren, uh, uh, guys, I'm tired from training. I rolled for over two hours today. Long time for me lately. And here we go into some Nikita. Why? Because you... I did, and, you know, sometimes I dabble in other arts because I pick up some techniques or you work on your sensitivity when you're too injured to do other stuff. Rimi Nagi. Kind of, I don't know what they call the throat grab thing. 
but I like it. And God knows I've done that many times. And here I do it reality-wise, breaking structure, hitting his lower back, but I apologize because I don't think they really teach that in the curriculum anymore, or at least not like Akikai here. I don't know if they do or not. Anyway, um, some elbow pins here. He's got a knife in his hand, so I love how you fold, uh, you fold that. And the uh, actually, the um, I probably did that in the past Kelly or stuff. But uh, that eighth Dan uh, master at the Aki Kai showed me that. And uh, I really like that. And you can see that in my, I think, one through five or one through ten, five through ten, six through ten videos. Pictures of Tenzo Gracie and Sakuraba and Hoyler's always been cool to me. I've always dug Tenzo, always dug Hickson guys, me with Hickson. Gene the Bell, the man, Gokoshevichian, the man. Fabiano Scherner, Dennis Hallman, the man. Here's where I'm color commentating pancreas. If you got Fight Pass 270 to 276, hope you enjoyed it. Please thumbs up, subscribe, yo, and I will catch you on the flip side.